Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you all today is one that does thankfully have a happy ending. It's kind of a crazy case how it all went down, but it's really cool to read how exactly the police were able to solve this crime. So with that being said, let's just jump right into today's case. Today's case is a very recent one and we don't know a ton about those involved but I will share with you what information we do have about the case and the people involved. Melody Sasser is a 47-year-old woman from Knoxville, Tennessee, who worked as an environmental compliance specialist with Pilot Headquarters. Back in 2020, Melody matched with a man named David Wallace on Match.com. David is a retired energy emergency manager and an Air Force One veteran. From there, it's been reported that the two became hiking buddies after meeting. David said that him and Melody bonded over her helping him plan for his big hike along the Appalachian Trail. She helped him make reservations at different hostels, planned out the rest points with him, and she agreed to store his car for him while he was gone. From all accounts, it seemed that Melody and David only knew each other as friends and nothing ever progressed beyond that. Everywhere it's been reported that they were just hiking buddies. But after knowing each other for probably about a year, it seems, that part isn't totally clear, but from what I've gathered, it seemed that they knew each other for about a year at this point. Around that time, David informed Melody that he would be moving to Alabama so that he could be with another woman named Jennifer. After moving to Platteville, Alabama, he informed Melody that him and Jennifer were engaged and to this, Melody did not respond well. In the fall of 2022, Melody showed up to David and Jennifer's house unannounced and uninvited. During that time, she said to David, I hope you both fall off a cliff and die. Then around the same time, Jennifer noticed some damage to her car. It looked like someone had keyed the sides of her car, so she reported this damage to the police. After that, Jennifer then started to receive numerous phone calls from various phone numbers by someone who was clearly using a device to disguise their voice. The person in these calls were threatening Jennifer, and when she tried tracing the calls, she found out that they were coming from a voice over IP or computer-generated numbers or internet calls, which were untraceable. So eventually, she had to contact her cell phone provider and she had them block any calls that were coming from an IP or fake numbers. So obviously, it seemed that Melody was making these calls to Jennifer, which she kind of had a suspicion of at the time, but obviously it wasn't confirmed. But allegedly, harassing and scaring Jennifer was not enough for Melody. She allegedly wanted her dead. So in late December of 2022 and early 2023, Melody signed up for a website on the dark web called Online Killers Market, or OKM for short. This website claims to offer hitmen for hire services. They promise to offer services at the customer's request, including online hacking, kidnapping, extortions, acid attacks, and sexual violence. The website boasted over 12,000 registered users from countries all over the world. This website style is a more public forum where users will openly ask questions related to hits and hiring hitmen from the website. You can also create an account and submit an actual order. In the order, the user will detail exactly what they want to happen, give full details about the victims, and any other relevant information. From there, they get their quote for each job and have a hitman assigned to them. Then, once you register for an account, you can privately message other registered accounts as well as the hitman that is assigned to you. You can also privately speak with the administrators of the website as well. Then, to prevent their transactions from being tracked, they pay for their services in cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, which we will talk about a little bit more later in the video. On January 11th, 2023, someone from the username of Catree posted a request. The request lists Jennifer as the target by name. The user posts the address, which is located in Platteville, Alabama. The description of the post reads as follows. It needs to seem random or an accident or plant drugs. Do not want a long investigation. She recently moved in with her new husband. She works at home and in office in Birmingham. She works at the wide orbit office address redacted in Hoover, Alabama. 
When she works in office, she works later. She drives a black Subaru Outback with Alabama license plate redacted. Her husband drives a maroon Jeep Grand Cherokee, Alabama license plate redacted. Her husband works at Publix part-time. They have three dogs that bark and jump, but nice dogs. The status on the post was listed as the payment being submitted and secured in escrow. It was reported that even though the post was made on January 11th, the payment was submitted via Bitcoin on December 31st, 2022. Then the user posted a photo of Jennifer to ensure that the assigned hitman would be able to positively identify her. But by the end of March of 2023, it seemed that Katri was starting to get frustrated that the job was not being completed. So, after making that post, the hitman was assigned to her and it was said that the job would be carried out, but months later, it still hadn't happened. So, on March 22nd, 2023, Cat Tree messaged OKM stating, I have waited for two months and 11 days and the job is not completed. Two weeks ago, you said it was being worked on and would be done in a week. The job is still not done. Does it need to be assigned to someone else? Will it be done? What is the delay? When will it be done? By March 28th, OKM finally messaged Cat Tree back saying, hello, she is not aware. He just failed as he did not attempt it yet. He felt like it's too risky for him to do it, saying that the message was from the admin team. So it's not the hitman, messaging her directly. It's the admin team that's messaging her for the hitman. Now, just to pause for a second and you will see why in just a minute, Jennifer and David both use a fitness tracking app called Strava to track their activity while they hike and exercise. This app is connected to their Garmin GPS, which helps identify location data while they're out hiking or jogging. It seems that somehow Melody was able to obtain this information from the app because their location data was extracted from the GPS and it matched some of what the user Catree was posting on OKM. So I looked a little bit further and it seems that if you're following someone on this app, it will show you their activity data. I don't know if it shows the exact GPS location, but I know some friends who are runners and it'll actually show like the path that they took. And if you're familiar with the area, you can see exactly where they went. So I assume it's probably similar to how that app works. So I don't know if you just have to follow this person to see their location data. If it does, that's a little bit concerning. I would hope that there's like different privacy settings, but either way, by March 27th, 2023, Jennifer was out and walking around her neighborhood. The next day on March 28th, Cat Tree responds to the message from OKM and said, yesterday she worked from home and went for a two mile walk by herself assign another that can complete the job. Police would later confirm that on the Strava app, she did indeed walk exactly two miles on March 27th, and she did work from home on that day. On March 29th, OKM messaged Cat Tree back and it says, hello, I have two other hitmen that I can assign to the job, but one wants 0 to 49 Bitcoin and the other 0 0.485. Which should I assign? Cat Tree responds, assign 0 0.485. I will add Bitcoin. According to the research that I was able to find in March of 2023, 0.485 Bitcoin would have been roughly 11,000 US dollars. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was the estimate that I was able to find. It seems that it goes up and down every single day, just like any other stock that you would invest in. So that's just a rough, very rough estimate. But according to police documents, Cat Tree ended up paying $9,750 in total. So my estimate could be and probably is off, but that's about how much she ended up paying. By April of 2023, the Homeland Security Investigators or HSI of Birmingham contacted the United States Department of Homeland Security to report that Jennifer was the target of an attempted assassination plot. From there, the US authorities notified Jennifer and David and told them that there was a threat to Jennifer's life. At that time, they offered to monitor their residence and offered protection to Jennifer around that time. When they notified her of this attempt on her life, Jennifer immediately mentioned Melody Sasser. Jennifer told the authorities about the little surprise visit that she got in the fall of 2022, where Melody told them to fall off of a cliff and die. Then she told them about how her car was vandalized before she started getting these threatening phone calls. 
So, of course, the subject of the police investigation was Melody Sasser at that point. So, police first started by looking into Melody's cell phone records. They found that there were three calls made from Melody's phone to Jennifer's phone on November 7th, 2022. Then there were six phone calls made to Jennifer on November 14th, 2022, again from Melody. Then they were able to identify Melody's vehicle. They found that Melody drove a 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe, and obviously they figured out her license plate number, which was redacted from the report. We don't really need that. Either way, on November 9th and November 14th, 2022, Melody's vehicle was spotted within the immediate vicinity of Jennifer's workplace in Hoover, Alabama. Now, going back to the fact of Bitcoin being used for the transaction for the order that Catree placed for that hit. The way that Bitcoin typically works, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm totally new to this. This is just what I was able to find online. But the way Bitcoin typically works is that the user will purchase Bitcoin from a virtual currency exchange, which allows customers to trade virtual currencies. This is used for crypto, but it can also be used for conventional currency, such as US dollar to euro exchange. These are regulated in the US, and those using virtual currency exchanges usually have to provide identifying information to confirm their identities to make the purchase. Then, to transfer Bitcoin to another Bitcoin address, there is a lot less information collected. The information collected includes almost no personally identifiable information about either the sender or the recipient. Then the sender will make a transaction announcement, which is verified by the network, and then it's added to the blockchain. The blockchain is a decentralized public ledger or an open access network. This means that anyone can join at any time, so there's no single entity that controls the blockchain network. The blockchain network then collects and logs every Bitcoin address that receives Bitcoin and maintains records of each transaction for each Bitcoin address. Because of this, even though the information isn't publicly available, and again, there's a lot less personal information collected on each user, if the addresses are subpoenaed by law enforcement, Sometimes, and I mean sometimes, not in all cases, but sometimes the investigators can find the original address for the Bitcoin exchange, which can identify the person responsible for the transaction. I'm explaining all of this, first of all, again, because I truly had no idea how any of this worked before reading up on this case, but I also think that a lot of people think that Bitcoin is completely untraceable. I thought it was, but in some cases it can be traced and the person responsible for a transaction might be identified. So CoinHub is a cryptocurrency ATM company who authorities subpoenaed to track down the person responsible for the Bitcoin exchange made by the user CatTree. They found out that Melody purchased Bitcoin with cash on four separate occasions at a CoinHub ATM located in Knoxville, Tennessee. On December 31st, 2022, Melody deposited $1,000 into the ATM, which bought her about $750 of Bitcoin after all of the fees, I guess, associated with the transaction. Then they tracked the Bitcoin address that the funds were sent to, which was consistent as the payment address belonging to the user CatTree on OKM. This transaction was made on January 14th. Then on January 28th, Melody deposited another $1,300 in that same ATM and once again, about $1,000 worth of Bitcoin was sent to the same address belonging to CatTree. This transaction was made on January 14th. Then on January 28th, Melody deposited another $1,300 in that same ATM, and once again, about $100 worth of Bitcoin was sent to the same address belonging to CatTree. Then on March 29th, 2023, same thing, she got Bitcoin and submitted it to that same user. Then the ATM also takes pictures of the users when making these transactions, and the person using the ATM at these times matches Melody Sasser. And once again, like I mentioned earlier, the full amount that Melody ended up spending to hire this assassin was $9,750. So that is how authorities were able to connect Melody Sasser as absolutely, definitely, allegedly, being Cat Tree and being the one responsible for trying to order a hit on Jennifer, David's wife. Now, I don't know exactly how the HSI was tipped off, but from what I can tell, again, and the research that I've done, 
Many of these murder for hire websites are just a big scam. Most of the time, I would assume that they're like undercover officers trying to catch people, trying to order hits, but that's not the case that it seems for a lot of, if not most of these sites. Sometimes these are just people that are creating these websites, collecting payments, and just taking their money. It's actually really smart, not gonna lie, because these people aren't going to report stolen money when they literally paid money for a hit on another person. So these scammers are just getting away with this money from stupid people who just trust the internet without really doing much research. That's clearly, in my opinion, what happened here. I think that since this was a more open forum website, that law enforcement probably does monitor these websites, and I wonder if that's how they were tipped off, or if they even got an anonymous tip from the people running the website after collecting their money since she was so hellbent on them doing the hit. Either way, after this investigation, Melody Sasser was arrested on May 18th, 2023. Then she was indicted on charges of using interstate commerce facilities in the commission of a murder for hire. If convicted, Melody could be facing a maximum sentence of 10 years behind bars, restitution to the victim, and a $250,000 fine. So that is all of the information that we have on this case so far. When I first stumbled upon this case, I was just so baffled and that's why I wanted to cover it. Also, because it's nice to cover cases once in a while where nobody is actually harmed. It's just so weird to me that this woman, who everyone says was just friends with David, gets so jealous that she wanted to get Jennifer out of the picture that bad. I mean, clearly she wanted to be more than friends, but still, she paid almost $10,000 to get Jennifer out of the picture for a man that she didn't even seem to try that hard to pursue. Again, we don't have all of the information. There absolutely could be more going on here. They did meet on Match.com, so clearly they started as having some sort of attraction to each other. Whether they realized early on that they were better suited as friends or dating didn't work out, I really don't know. I wish we knew more of that information on how they met on Match.com, why they ended up just being hiking buddies. Did they ever have a relationship? Were they friends this whole time? Was Melody looking for something more? Did David reject her? Or was she just in this headspace where she really wanted David? He didn't even really know how much she felt for him because she never really told him and then just sort of acted out when he didn't pursue her. I have no idea. I do think that there probably will be a trial just based on how unstable and unhinged Melody seems, but we could be surprised. I'm not sure, but for now, that is all of the information that we have on today's case, and if there is a trial, I will keep you all updated on any new information that we learn about this case. But now I want to know what you all think. Why do you think this happened so long after the pair met? Do you think they actually did have a relationship at any point? Do you think they truly just were friends at first? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Make sure to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and check out my Facebook as well as my Twitter and Instagram. All of that will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form that I have listed down below as well. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.